The Dog Point Podcast. Episode 10. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to episode 10 of the Dog Point Podcast. Today is a bit of a special episode as we have a guest here. We have Jeremy from Hakwai K9 out of Toronto, Canada. Hey guys, what's up? What's up, what's up? And um, he's here on vacation and some work. Yeah, yeah, doing and some work. Uh, I brought a uh, French bulldog down for Fianna and Bungie. And uh, one time I kind of paired it with uh, just digging into more of the dog culture in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, before I left, I wasn't heavily involved so much with the dog culture. I was always into dogs, but uh, this trip I really kind of dove in um, under Alan Mitchell. Right. Um, and meeting yourself. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So, we've done some work yeah. the last two yeah. weeks. And um, I wanted to talk a little bit about this whole movement that is plaguing us all. Mm-hmm. With the force free yeah, training. Yeah, the force free guys. Um, not all of it bad, but a lot of it is. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. And if we as, and I consider myself a balance trainer, right. if we don't talk about it, and if we don't set the record straight on a few things, then we are the ones that are going to lose out. I definitely agree. Because the force-free ideology is sounding really good. It pulls on hard strings and therefore politicians love it, which is the biggest problem. Mm-hmm. Right? Because politicians don't care about substance. Once something looks like it could be popular, yeah. they jump on it. Correct. With no regard of consequences. Yeah. And that's what's been happening in Europe. Mm-hmm. I agree. Uh, for instance, the the bully slash pit bull band that just just started in the UK. Um, mm-hmm. That was a big uh, a big scene, and it kind of spiraled out of control. Um, based on on yes, there was an attack. Um, that was the straw that kind of broke the camel's back. But um, I think the biggest problem, as you rightfully said, is, and I think it's more of an ignorance thing, is we are focused a lot and everyone is focused a lot on uh, the type of training, whether it's balance training or force free training, that kind of stuff, instead of good quality dog ownership. Um, so you have a lot of shit owners, Right. And they're giving breeds a bad name because pretty much your Rottweiler guy, pretty much there will be no more Rottweilers in the UK as well. Uh, there'll be pretty much there'll be anything that will bite. So eventually a pump pack going to be out of, out of the scenes because it could be dangerous. You know, not putting any blame at all whatsoever on the owners slash handlers. Yeah. And the, the only place that I've seen that is really progressive in that sense is Calgary. Mm-hmm. In Calgary, they're not going after the dogs or the, any specific breed. Yeah. They're straight after the owner. Which, which You're I, responsible for the actions of your dog. If your dog bites somebody he wasn't supposed to, you go to jail. Correct. That's it. That's how it should be. Yeah. Correct. That's how it should be all over the world. And they're going all over the world lecturing on it. Yes. And showing people, hey, this has worked. Yeah. And here's why it has worked. And breed-specific legislation does not work. It cannot. Because the same asshole mentality that some people have, the only dogs, they just switch breed. Correct. Right? In Italy, they started banning pit bulls, and shortly after, they had 17 breed bans. Yeah. And has anything changed? No. The same amount of people are still dying every year. Mm-hmm. You know? It has shown not to work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I agree. And they I did mean, something similar in our region, in Antigua. Yeah. Where they do... Pretty much the same. They took the Calgary um, Act yeah. and modified it for their culture and their country. Mm-hmm. And they're also successful with it. Yeah, um, I think I think the biggest problem is a lack of education uh, in terms of, of owners. Uh, because there is, and you know, the, the problem is the internet is a pro and a con. Because as a new dog owner, and I get it, as a new dog owner, um, 
there's so much information. You're just trying to do right by the dog. So most times you're just trying to do right by the dog. Um, because they would they, these people they love their dogs, right? And they're trying to do right by the dog, but there's so much conflicting information. Yeah. You know? Um, and and then even when it comes to choosing a trainer, there's a lot of conflicting information because one trainer is gonna say this, the next trainer is gonna say that. Um, and you know what? I will say it kind of boils down to the proof is in the pudding. Yeah, and that is a point that was coming to, right? What you hear more and more is people coming to trainers and saying, look, my dog has X problem. I went to three trainers yeah. and I got zero results. Correct. Nothing has changed. Right? The dog is doing the same thing. He's a little older, so it's worse now. And I spent thousands of dollars and I'm, I got nowhere. Mm-hmm. And when you, you go behind, who were those trainers? All force free. All force free. Correct. All positive reinforcement, I should say. Well, <coughs> I want to believe that we all use positive reinforcement 90 something percent of the time. Well, I, I agree, and, and that's right? we even teach with humans. Us, we right? teach using positive reinforcement, Correct. but there comes a time when you have, where to, you say have no. to say, hey, no. Exactly. That's not how it works. There is no creature on this planet that goes through life force free. Yes. I, From I, the I most agree. complex mammal down to the single cell organisms, they all move away from discomfort and towards comfort. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That is how everything that lives learns. Mm-hmm. So this idea that you teach your dog with zero pressure and zero stress yeah. and zero corrections and don't even say no, oh my God. Yeah. You know, you're so cruel if you say no. And boundaries. And no boundaries. The dog can do whatever and then if, if you don't like it, you manage the environment Yeah, you, you, we call and that, take away all the stimuli from the dog so that he doesn't do it. Yes. Right? And then the dog ends up never being outside, never being in open field, being and able to run and, and let it rip because you have a good recall. Never, you know, goes for a walk somewhere because, yeah. oh my God, there could be some other dog barking at him and my dog is reactive so I can't go there. Rather than teaching your dog, hey, no, yeah, walk with me. I, I think, you know what, it's up to us as trainers to promote that lifestyle. In terms of, I always tell people, a dog, when, a dog without training is a liability of to you and your family. But when you experience a trained dog, whether it's a small dog, a big dog, a protection dog, a pet, it is now an asset to your family. You really get to enjoy the dog. You really, I, like I have clients, somebody just called me today, right? Jeremy, I love my dog so much, but I hate my dog so much right now, right? Because it's hard, but that's what you get for not training a dog. But again, it, it goes back to it. The, the problem with it, and I will tell you this too, and I was speaking to somebody about that just uh, yesterday. The same way, the force free people are marketing themselves and the same way they are out there and pushing and making content because content is 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 what is going to educate people mm-hmm. right it's the same way we on our side need to to put that content out there to market right show your work to and and more so show that and i always say it show that the proof is in the pudding right yeah Show me, and, and I always tell people this, show me a force-free person, take a dog that has a bite history, right? Let's take dogs because we've done it. If any of you guys check my Instagram, Hakwai K9 on Instagram, right? Check it out. We've done dogs that bite history, bit up a kid, bit up a dog, last chance to be put down before they're being put down. The... The first things first, the other trainers that tried to fix the dog, force free, they couldn't work, right? So now this dog is going to die. It's going to die, right? Unless you step in now with, with and let the dog know, hey, you can't, sit. there's certain things you can't do and certain things you can't do, right? For instance, like mauling someone, there's something you can't do, yeah. right? Take somebody who's force free. I could, I, I, I could put money on the table right now. Put money. I could put money on the table. 
We should all just put money on the table, and it has been done before. It was not gonna say it has been done. <laughs> there, there is a um a, a trainer in in, in UK, UK. twenty two thousand pounds. Put put I'll right? put that money on the table right now. Too. Get the dog not to go after a herd of sheep. Out in the open. Let's make it right? simple. Let's make it more simple. Let's and nobody stepped up. Um, Obsidian Canine. Yeah. Had put out a challenge. Let's make it easier right? than that. Let's take a dog on leash. On leash. You have full leash, right? Give the dog any treat you want. Any treat you want. Any treat. But let's take a dog aggressive dog, right? Stand on the street and walk a dog in front of him. And I want to see you get that dog to stop the behavior by using a treat. And you know what? The funny thing about the, the positive only people is they don't realize that it's actually, you are actually rewarding the behavior the moment you try to give a dog a treat at, at that instant when they were sh- displaying that negative behavior. Yeah. You, you just can't just be a yes They're man all you day redirect long. the dog and then you reward him for redirecting. There is something called auditory exclusion. Mm-hmm. If a dog... Dogs don't multitask. So if a dog gets super focused on something, their brain literally doesn't hear you. Mm. They block you out. Right? And I got to experience that in a good way mm-hmm. with my um, late dog Ninja, right. my German Shepherd. We did a demo for the Hunters Association. Mm-hmm. And Ninja is a dog that he didn't care whether there's two people watching the demo or like in that case, in Mayaro, you had 2,000 people surrounding a football field. There's a PA system. There's music playing. There's strollers with, with, with children. There's children screaming and running. There's dogs barking everywhere, howling, because it's a hunter's dog yeah. show. And we did the obedience demo. Yeah. And he blocked all of that out. And all he could see is us, the yeah. me and five feet around us. Right. That is the only thing he was interested in. Mm-hmm. He blocked out everything. His brain just discern that yeah and the same happens when a dog is reactive he's so focused on that dog because most of the reactivity stems out of fear fear and trauma right right so either he got attacked before and he gets overly defensive to prevent it from happening again correct right or he is just afraid of what might happen yeah and so the dog is so focused and in survival mode at that point that whatever you say to try and redirect this dog no, no amount of food, no amount of talking to him is going to change that. Mm-hmm. You have to physically get through to the dog for him to look away from that dog and look at you. It's like, what? Yeah. But then and what then happens when that somewhere. dog has no food drive? Yeah. But <laughs> right? So what happens with positive only when... Then you say pretty please. Right? P- pretty, pretty <laughs> please. Right? What happens when that dog has no food drive? What do you do then? Pray. Right, and that's the problem. That's the problem with with. Uh, you can't always manage the environment, right? It's, it no, but you call that accommodating the dog. Yeah, uh, but they have to realize that there is competing motivators out there. Correct. So what works home in your in your household in your comfort zone with the neighbor walking their dog at a hundred yeah. feet away is not the same as you being in the road and a dog w- on a flexi line is running up on your dog. Yeah. With the lady screaming, it's okay, he's friendly. He's friendly. He's friendly. Everybody yeah. knows. How is it that every trainer I talk to yeah. finishes that sentence for me? Can I, can, I, my, can our dog say hi? Can our dog say hi? Right? right? Your dog is frothing at the mouth, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Your dog is frothing. And, and so, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's ludicrous. Yeah. It's ludicrous. And it's the, 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 the wrong perception of what socialization means, too. You know, dog owners believe that socializing the dog means that everybody needs to pet their dog and yeah. that their dog needs to play with every dog it yeah. encounters. We don't allow that at all with my clients. No. Yeah. What what socialization means, and I've done videos on this free on my on my social media. Yeah. Socialization means that the dog has to be functioning in the presence of other people and other dogs yeah. and other stimuli. I like that definition. That is what socialization yeah. is. Right? Yeah. The dog is environmentally neutral yeah. and, and concentrates what he's doing with you. Yeah. And actually, we worked that with force. Yes. Uh, the last thing we did in protection uh, yesterday was yeah. working force and just becoming neutral, neutral. Right. Uh, especially after that kind of stimulation. Yes. You know, um, 
And yeah, I, yeah. I think people don't. The, the biggest thing that I try to tell my clients too is master the art of doing nothing. You know, sometimes you just have to master the art of doing nothing. Just a simple sit, sit, stay. Yeah. Or don't I, stay and just. I, I tell my clients when you go to a park, it is not to meet dogs. Yeah. Sit on a bench, have the dog in a down. Yeah. And just hang out for half an yeah. hour. Yeah. Let the dog take it in. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they just need time to lie down and digest what's happening. Yeah. So there's these people exercising there. There is this stray dog running around Correct. there. There is this person on a bicycle. There are some children playing. Yeah. And nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens to them. Yeah. And the more often they, are, they make that experience, the more normal it becomes to see all of this. I agree. That is socialization. Yeah. And then you, when the dog is fine with this particular park, then you go to another venue and another mm -hmm. venue and another venue. And by the time you reach venue number 10 or 15, yeah. you can take your dog anywhere and he just doesn't care. I think a big one that uh, most owners overlook, and this might be, I would say, the, the beginning of foundation in, in training for, for any dog, right, is crate training. I, I think that's but the most underlooked. Cruel. The most underlooked. Like, for instance, before I came here, that's how I arrived so late. Uh, we had to go to, to pick up uh, one of the golden retrievers from my friend's estate. Uh, big up JB Chocolates. We ate your chocolates yesterday. Big it up. Tastes really nice. <laughs> Tastes really nice. Um, but uh, we had to take the dog from... He went to get neutered. Um, now, as we're on that topic, I'm not... I'm an advocate for not neutering dogs until a certain age. Uh, I noticed the the scrotum looking a little swollen maybe two days ago. And I, re I realized it was starting to retain a little fluid. So I was like, let's go get this checked out. And so said, so done. A little cancer was there. We caught it early. We clipped him. He was about eight years old. Um, so he lived to fight another day. I had that happening with a three-year-old Doberman. Yeah. And he lived to exactly, past, past right? 11 after So I believe, in, I believe in neutering at the right time. Right? So we'll touch on that after. But while we're still on the, the crate training subject, if this dog wasn't crate trained, right? And it went to the vet now. Now you have having this dog freaking out by the vet. Right? Because yep. what, what, is, what is the vet supposed to do after they... The, the dog is starting to come to from anesthesia. Just We should just all chill out here outside with you because you're afraid of the crate. The vet has no time for that. And, and it's dangerous. Yeah, It's dangerous, right? So I, let, I don't think a lot of people realize how important and how much of a foundation for your dog crate training is. Even going back to the same thing you were talking about in terms of when we put all these the dogs in all this this these situations and this stimulation, but as soon as you get home, the best thing to do would be obviously if you work the dog, so he's tired, he's fed, put him in his crate, let him decompress. That is yep. the place to decompress. If he's outside, he's still not decompressing because there's still people don't realize there's still stim inside the house. Yes. Right? So we need to we need to put them away and and help them to to literally decompress in a crate. Another thing about that is most and again education we need to educate people about this. The crate should never be used for punishment, right? Yeah. Dogs don't understand timeout. No, and but uh, but again, and and that's that's actually how there where there's some dilemmas in that force free where it starts falling apart, right? When you, when you start putting the dog in the crate as a timeout or giving a dog a timeout, dogs don't understand that shit, right? So now you're punishing the dog in the crate, so obviously I'm not going to like it, right? But if we, if we develop the crate to be your bedroom, that's your space in the house. Your safe space. Your safe space, exactly. Now the dog is, loves the crate. So now when, we when you put them in a situation where, hey, we have to, we have to go in this crate. For instance, I, when I moved to Toronto from Trinidad, my dog had to go in the crate for hours, right? That dog needed to be in the crate f five hours before you travel. The trip is six hours, right? So we're already on 11 hours. And then when you get there, you still have to clear customs. That's maybe another three, four hours, right? That's a long time. If your dog is not crate trained, that would that, I think that could mentally break your dog. You know? Yeah, I, I always say crate train your puppy. It, it also helps with potty training, because you bring structure to it and, and routine in terms Correct. of time, as well as less destruction in the house, because when you can't supervise your dog, it's in the crate. And 
it also teaches the dog that it's okay to be alone at times. Yes. How many dogs yes. or how many customers have approached you with the problem of separation, separation anxiety? anxiety, yeah. anxiety. That's, a, that's um that we have that is have, the biggest thing. Exactly. We have made these dogs that bad. And I've had some breeds like uh the Alaskan Malamute. That dog would rip through anything. Anything. It does not matter what you put that dog in. That so that owner would need a babysitter if they needed to even go to the grocery. Right? Yeah. Because there's nothing stopping that dog. Like it would rip apart a wire crate, it's destroying the metal crate, and then it taught itself how to open the door and just walk around the condo. Just looking for a human to spend time with. It's not aggressive or anything. It just can't be alone. Yeah. You and, know? And, and that is you know again created humans. by humans. Humans. Yeah. Right? It's created by humans. But then then you have countries that banned everything under the sun. Yeah. In Switzerland you can't have the dog in a crate. Yeah. So if you are a breeder in Switzerland, yeah. How pressure. you ship a dog? Pressure any pressure any How dance. do you ship a dog? How you transport this dog to the airport and then in put it arms. on a plane? In your arms. Yeah, That's so if I'm breeding Bernese mountain dogs, well, I'm sitting on a plane with this thing in my lap, <laughs> <laughs> taking it to to another country in my lap because Switzerland has banned well, crates. Switzerland, it, see you later, guys. No one is going to buy dogs from you, right? And nobody but wants to live there. Bec- right? I understand. It, it's it's it's, it's insane. It's, yeah, and it's, it's again. Rough. That's what I was alluding to with politicians, right? Mm-hmm. Just, oh, dogs locked up in a tiny yeah. crate. Oh, that is cruel. It, it, yeah. it appeals to them. Now, but they don't think it through, right? What does it mean? So now, How I, is it used correctly? At the same time, again, and that's why I'm so hell-bent on in Toronto and in Trinidad because we protested against the BSL, right? And they eventually amended it, right? Um, but I will say, yeah, like, I think we should... We should push and focus a lot more on legislation towards dog ownership, right? Where, I mean, where you have to have, I think you should have a license to to own a certain type of breed, right? It shouldn't be super hard to get it, but you should show proficiency in minimum handling, right? Where you you have to do a class or some or some shit maybe maybe a, maybe a like a the minimum pro- of four sessions five sessions something like that. The problem is the only thing you can test for really in that scenario is your theoretical knowledge. Mm-hmm. Because if you need a license to have a dog, right? How do you show that you can handle a dog if you can't have it? So it's the chicken and the egg thing, right? I mean, so that way, think about it. We have a lot of dogs in the shelters. We could start doing something with that in terms of yeah. Of a shelter can also have a, one dog that is for that purpose. So different people come in and handle the dog. Correct. And and you not know? only that, if we if we designate, let's just say we designate, uh, certain dog trainers. Those dog trainers themselves would have dogs specifically for the purpose of teaching handling, right? Specifically for the the, the purpose of oh, this might be a this you have a small dog. A big dog, right? Uh, but I think I, that might be the best direction versus us just playing it by air because it, it's clear that this isn't going anywhere uh, good anytime soon and it's it's spiraling worse and worse now because I think since, since the whole uh, lockdown, since the whole COVID scene, a lot of people have been getting dogs, right? Uh, a lot more people have been, been been getting into the dog culture instead, right? And now it's getting bad because you have an influx of people who, who got dogs who are now turning around two, three years old, now maturing and have no training, right? No foundation, nothing. And keep in mind, all these people, uh, especially around, again, around COVID, there was a lot of information and misinformation online. So now you're like, yeah. okay, how do I choose this? And I mean, I feel it for those people. Huh? I feel it for those people because it's so hard. Like if, if let's just say I didn't know you and I, I did not, I, I, I wasn't a dog trainer. Um, the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to go on Google or I'm going to go on YouTube or TikTok and say, okay, I'm typing in uh, how to train a dog, right? And again, back to content creation. Who's the people who, who push in that first? The force free. Yeah. So we can't blame, we can't, as the balance people, we can't blame 
uh, peop- some some people for being ignorant because we are not taking any time to put it out there. Now, I know it's hot. I know it's hot. But <laughs> tell me about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you're freaking doing tell, it, right? Tell me about it. Right now. We have... All right. We have hundreds of, of free videos yeah. on all major social media platforms. Yeah. You know, it's not easy to keep up. No, it isn't. That. It's an it isn't. insane amount of work. But it it you could see, I'm sure you could see the value in how much uh you're educating people, right? I'm I'm sure you could see that because like even I could tell you guys, even before I met you through Alan. I was I was seeing some of your videos even in Toronto. I was seeing seeing stuff from from you guys, and I would share some of that to my clients because I mean I fell in that in that category too where I'm making I'm doing some content, but I'm not. Sometimes I might be as in depth as you guys, and I might be like, you know what, this guy said it the best, right? Just look at his video. You'll understand, <laughs> right? <laughs> so so yeah, and, but I mean, it, yeah, we're trying we're trying to put out a mixture of actually showing the work, yeah, as well as you know, explaining it. Yes. So that anybody who now gets to get having a door yeah. can get some information to yeah. get started from potty training, what to do with your puppy, how to create engagement. Yeah. So like dog is actually wanting to work with you later. Yeah. And Motivation, you know, allow puppies to be puppies. And yes. You don't, you don't jump into the sit down and, and heal yeah. with a little puppy. Going through the process. You know, you just you just create a form of communication with the puppy first so that when you start training it gets so much easier. Yeah. You know, and you reward all the behaviors that you like. So if the dog sits or if the dog lies down or comes to you, th- there's no command attached to it. It's like, yeah, here, yeah. Uh, take a treat. Yeah. yeah. I like what you're doing. Yeah. Feedback. And Fe- so the uh, dog understands loop. that okay, I want to do this more often because he seems to like yeah. it. Yeah. And I get food. And so, you know, you you get the dog already into it and then it's just to attach a name to it. Which then becomes yeah. the command, correct? You know, and then you have the basics, and you have a dog that is focusing on you, that is interested in working with you, and that is half the bed right there. I think another you big know? big issue is people. Uh, a lot of people, I would say most people, they they choose a breed based on like they just saw it and they like it. You know, way boy, I like this Kangal, but I live <laughs> in a one bedroom apartment and I don't have I don't yeah. have the time. You know. A lot of people don't. And when don't the dog curls up, yeah. it takes up the whole, all of the king size bed. I know, right? <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I used to live in a one bedroom downtown uh, in Toronto, and we had six dogs, right? I shouldn't be saying that, but we did. <laughs> <laughs> right? But we had a lot of dogs there big dogs, small dogs, right? Um, so it could be done, yeah. right? And, it's, it's, and my wife was working, I was working too, right? But we put any time because we love dogs like that. Right, but my my main point is a lot of people don't, and that's one thing I could fault people for in this instance. If you wanted, if we training is one thing, training is one thing. I could understand the information that could get could mislead mislead you in training, mm-hmm. but in terms of you researching a breed and understanding the breed, nah. There's just so much information out there. You can't tell me that you didn't go at least once. Five or ten minutes on Google yeah, can tell on. you a lot. Right? You can't tell you me. You, you, so you, yeah. I always tell people, so people research for half an hour mm-hmm. which um, handbag they're going to buy next on yeah. Amazon. Yeah, or the cell phone. Right? Or, or cell what phone. is the latest cell phone? Or a should I get game. an iPhone? Or should I get an Android? Yeah, a new car. And wouldn't when it comes to dogs, just... Oh, this is so cute. I want one. And have no idea as to what this breed comes with. What characteristics does the breed come with? You know, what health is it suitable the for my with? lifestyle? Yes. What health issues that the breed come with as well? Yeah. Right? Because uh, sometimes you might be getting into a breed that it might be it might be fancy, it might be a sexy breed, but you don't know you're going to be paying a shit ton of money on on health bills or like this 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 uh fad in Trinidad with people owning huskies, right? Yeah. I, like for the life of me. Plus 32 at 90% right? humidity, but and you then, want a husky. And then on top of that, you you, you want to know, well, well, why is he acting like that? Because he was meant to run 100 friggin' miles a day, right? In the cold, right? Yeah. So they're like, oh, you know what? We'll put him in the AC. I, yeah, okay. He, he's inside. You do right by him by, by giving him a little cool. But this dog was meant for work. He was meant to run and pull shit. Yeah. Right. 
So when that is not fulfilled, I must give trouble. They get, right? they get miserable. See, Zamalan said it the best. Uh, a waking dog or a, a dog specifically bred, every dog was specifically bred for something. Right? That they are literally, it's is like a person with a doctorate in their field that is unemployed. Right? And I think that's the, that's the best way to describe it. You have a doctorate, but you just, you just, you, there's no work for you. Right? And you're getting frustrated. And I think that's the best, best way to, to describe yeah. uh, a working so dog, how they, a, how they feel. People get a little, a little terrier. You know, like a little Jack like Russell. Like a Jack Russell, and, yeah. And then wonder why the dog is constantly digging up in electrical wires or yeah. digging up in between plants and, yeah. and digs up the yard. And, or like border collies. You ever get these dogs like it's, yeah. it's such a cute dog. Once once the herd up and around the cars. Up, right? Yeah. Or, or the new trend, I blame John Wick for that one, right? But the new trend of Malinois out here, man, I can't tell you how much people are getting miles and then they'll then they're like, Oh well, they can't handle it. Yeah, but nine months it's like it's too much dog for yeah. me. Yeah. So then at right? that point, what do you do? And then you know? <laughs> it's not fair to the dog. Now the dog has to be rehomed. Definitely has to be rehomed. That's one. So now the dog has bonded with you. It's nine months and has to be rehomed. There's not much people that, that will be willing to take a nine-month-old dog, even though it's still a puppy. I was called to a case where a guy thought it was a good idea to give his 72-year-old mother a Malinois as a guard dog oh, for shit. the yard. Hey. Her plant, you know, them more when, people when, like their when plants. She, them plants, them plants get she, mush up. Forget plants. When I got there, she um she said, Well the dog is out in the back there. That's okay, can you call him? Oh no, I'm not going out there. <laughs> it's her dog, right? Yeah. She's seventy two. The dog has thrown her over four or five times. Yeah. She broke her hip on one of those oh, occasions gosh. and the dog is in the back there, totally hyped up, and he hates anybody that doesn't live in the house. Yeah. You can't approach your dog. Mm-hmm. I say you need to rehome this dog or put or you know, they, yeah. They, you you that you can't have this dog. No, that's there is no way that that will end well, right? Yeah. And you know, she got upset when I said that. Oh, really? Yeah, because it was a gift from her son. Oh, you see. So yes, yeah, so, I said so. When she get bite up, well, we know this scene. You know. You the husband the hates scene. the dog because he's accustomed to reading a book on the back porch, which yeah. he can no longer and do. And now he can't enjoy. Now you're, you're he's hostage retired. in he your own house. all his life and to retire, you know, paid off for the house, wants to yeah. enjoy the property and sit in the back yeah. that he created yeah. to read a book on an afternoon and, and can't. And hostage. And can't because he's held hostage by a Malinois. Yeah. Right? Who then runs off with the book. It's, yeah. it's crazy. It's crazy. There's... there's I, do, I, I really don't think people put a lot of uh, effort into researching the breed. And then while we're on that topic, they, now people might have, they might, let's just say, okay, we went through the steps of, of finding a good breed. We, we know we like this breed. Another big thing, a big problem people have, and, and I think it's a problem all over the world, is backyard breeders in terms of people who are just, uh, just breeding not only for the money, but just breeding poorly bred dogs, Right, so now you have unstable dogs, or you might have dogs with just poor health. Mm-hmm. Right, so you know this is the breed that you wanted. Let's just say, for instance, the Doberman. Right, you know this is the breed you want. You, you did your research. You're willing to put in the work. You're willing to put in the time. You buy this dog, thinking that you know it looks. It seems like it looks good. It seems like it looks healthy, and then you get stuck with this friggin' dog that you are spending money. You're, no, you're bonded with this dog already. Now you're bonded with the dog. And now you're, you're, you're raking, trying to find money to, to keep this dog healthy. It has allergies. It has this. It has that. And now you're just forking out money on this dog now. And then the dog gets wobbler syndrome. Yeah. And then the dog, the dog eventually dies. And, you know, like, it's, it's a hard thing. Right? So I think, you know, for people out there, I, I will always say it. Do your research as well on getting a good breeder. Right, it does yeah. not no, no. It doesn't necessarily need to be a paper dog, right? You know, like some people they into just strictly registered dogs. It doesn't need, necessarily need to mean that that dog needs to be registered, but at least 
for the minimum test, at least health, health test. testing veterinary testing um and and that's another thing another big uh pointer for you guys if you're choosing a breeder ask to see the parents ask the call goes if you ask a breeder to, to see the parents and they, they the parents not on site or blah 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 now some people like they get their studs from away or they might import sperm to do a year right. but for the least the mother for the least right but you know even that is not a guarantee no i've seen it here in trinidad no. yeah because then you have brokers. somebody sold out a whole litter yeah and then bought a five week old litter yeah and put it under the same female because she was still lactating right and then told people she's, she's the mother that's crazy that's crazy <laughs> Came yeah, from a completely different game. set of parents. When you, the customer, when you come in, you don't know any yeah, better. Yeah, you don't know. You Especially if you're puppies, a new dog owner. You see the puppies nursing. Yeah, you're going to be like, wow. Right? And and then, you know, some people some people ask, why are, why are good dogs so expensive? Because when the amount of work that you put in. Oh, yeah, and the amount right? of testing and, yeah. and proofing and yeah. getting good stock to begin with. Yeah, you know, big, big up uh, Pipsqueak Mansion. Pipsqueak Mansion. You guys can check it out on Instagram as well, too. <laughs> Uh, that's my but while we're on the subject you know um, being a Rottweiler man right you have worked with Force mm -hmm. and you have noted how stable he is very stable Des despite his aggression and despite his and, and despite right? I mean we were in we were full on in training right you know usually and that, that was only like I believe his fourth uh, session big up big up one head one guard kennels yeah for, for breeding the specimen. Yeah. Then he was he was right? a very and, good and specimen. very consistent in the whole litter, right? Yeah. So all the all the the, the, the males tell that, that tell that breeder message me. I'm looking for Rottweiler right now, guys. I'm in I am in the <laughs> market. Right? So if you want some uh, a good trainer to wake your dog, send them. Right? I'm I'm looking. I'm looking right now. But uh actually that that was a big part of of my trip here, other than bring any French bulldog down um, was to see the different bloodlines that they had here. I wanted to, to, I like to dive deep into a breed when I'm diving in. I mm -hmm. like to get to know everything about that breed, um, the different bloodlines, that kind of stuff. And then I'm, I know what I'm looking for in terms of I'm my specialty and what I, I like is personal protection. Right. But something that could still be a family dog. It's not going to be yeah. batshit crazy. Right, it's not gonna. It's, I'm not looking to go to war in Iraq, right? A lot of police dogs are family dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. If they're trained, raised correctly, yeah. and selected properly, yeah, they a are good, also stable family temperament. Dogs. Yes, you know, they and, go uh, to work, and then when they come home, they yeah. play with the kids. I I found that with with Force, yeah, it was he was very stable. He was very stable, especially given uh, the amount of stimulation we put him through, and. Uh, you know, especially as I came, I came in as the wild card. Like I, I push, pushed him a little bit to right. see what what he would have done if he would have redirected on you, that kind of stuff. And I mean, he held his own well. Yeah. He especially towards well. the end when you were. Yeah, and then yeah, and then I, even even you were surprised because you were like, oh, if you put your hand on him, and I was like, yeah, I'm yeah, sure I was, he I was, I was expecting him to to yeah. want to go. Yeah, yeah. but you and, know, like, and you could tell he. The, the ears went up he and he tilted it. the head and he's like, oh, all right, you're going a little far yeah, there. He was thinking. Right? It. But he stayed. Yeah. And and, and I'm like, I'm so proud. It's yeah. Like, oh, I mean, you put the work in. <laughs> At the end of the day, the, the proof, I always say the proof is in the pudding. And the dog directly takes leadership yeah. from the handler. Yeah. That's if, why we call him If the I had leash dropped lead. the leash and tell him go, he would have gone. Yeah. Yeah. For shit show. <laughs> for shit show, he was biting me. He was waiting on it. He was waiting on it. Right? It's just because I didn't say anything. Yeah, he was like, "Come say it." Yeah, say he was it, like, it. "He's like, what? say it." Yeah, he was trying to feel out the situation too, right? Yeah. Because in the beginning, we were switching him off, we were switching him on, right? So sometimes he was kind of conflicted. Then this was the first time he was, uh he had to to work with two different decoys, right? right? And then have to work with two different decoys, and then switching between decoys based on targeting. So it was a lot of stem that he went through. You know, and to finish strong like that, that's why when, uh, I don't know if you remember Alan in the end, he was like, hey, you think we should give him another bite? And I was like, nah, he, he did so well on yeah. the end. Let's leave, just leave him with Yeah, that. let's end with that win. And let's end on that high note where we, we literally had no corrections to make. So yeah. let's just end on, on, on that. Yeah, because I didn't have to correct him. Yeah. 
at all yes. for, for it that, was a for nice loose leash you know um so yeah like I, big up the breeder big up the breeder I, I will check you guys out too i will check one head one guard kennel <laughs> yeah Right. Um, I we I might we ourselves uh, we breed uh, French bulldogs in in Toronto. Um, a lot of people. I'm training some Frenchies right now. Yeah. 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 They're they're, they're nice dogs. I I I was not a small dog person. Honestly, I was not a small dog person. I only known working dogs my entire life. Um, my wife as well. She likes working dogs. Okay. When we got into Frenchies, uh. I was pleasantly surprised that it was like having that bulldog pit bull, same kind of drive. They would still they would still catch rabbits in the yard. They would still have that gaminess and stuff, but very easy to train, super super easy to train. Once you work them, once you give them something to do, you give yeah at least every every being every mammal I would say it needs exercise. Yeah. Right. To to feel that fulfillment. Right. But once you once you give them that that exercise and a good solid nutrition, it was so easy. But without the aggression, mm-hmm. I could have trust that. The, I could trust so, the Frenchies. And then some of them, as adults, they go through all that high drive yeah. phase, where they do everything, mm-hmm. learn everything, and then they become adults. And then you say, "Okay, let's go and work." And he looks up. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What shit? <laughs> yeah, I'm here sleeping. Yeah. Leave me alone. Yeah, right. I and like beca- that about them. Be become, be so chill. become a little bit the, the couch potato. Yeah, that's the bulldog in them too. Huh? And then the owner got a, a female puppy, mm-hmm. and I started working with the puppy, and he's on the couch, looking at us like, "No, this shit is yeah. just wrong. I should be getting some of those treats." Yeah. And then he wants to join the training all of a sudden. Yeah. Right. And then they're he very family oriented dogs. Huh? You, you tell her down, and then he lies down next yeah. to her. Back learning. <laughs> yeah. Pack learning. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, there's a big thing right now too. Like, a lot of people are spreading this mis- misconception in terms of like uh, the colors, right? Um, not now. I agree. If that person is not testing properly, you could run into problems. You'll run into to uh, like I've seen something where the, the the puppies have like a huge amount of water retention. They're just like puffy. They come out just water filled. Wow. Yeah. They, they literally pass away. The whole little kind of passes away. Um, blindness, deafness. Like, for instance, if you have a recessive male with another, with a visual, or even a, another recessive male, you could have, uh, you know, a lot of health problems there. Right. But I think uh, once you do your due diligence, right, on everything, you, you check your check boxes, right, then now you're, you're, you're actually adding to the the breed right you add into the breed because let's be real there they, they are going to always have people who want french bulldogs me included right like i didn't i didn't like them before but now i love them you know i just there's now some breeders that um breed them with the nose a little longer again. yeah you call that big rope right, right? And, and i agree with that but the the well so the one that you're talking about in terms of lengthening or the muzzle. Yes. Yeah, so, so I they agree can with breathe, that too. So they can breathe Correct. better. Right? You know? I, so the first because thing... It, we, it has gotten to a point where, you know, they have trouble living. Yes. Correct. Right? Because it's a very lab... It's a very lab-grown dog. Yeah. Right? Um, the, me, lengthening out the muzzle, yes, I'm very much into that as well. We choose dogs. First of all, we look at the nose to see, is there any stenosis? Right? Uh, and then I want, yeah, the muzzle is a cooling system of the dog. Yep. That's the radiator of the dog. So we look for, for a good cooling system. And we also test, before we even breed dogs, we test them. How are you in, in plus 32, plus, plus 35? I'm, I'm putting, and, and you know from seeing me work uh, with even force, I'm, I'm all about the data. Mm-hmm. I'll put on a timer. I'll say, okay, this is how long we worked for. This is how long we rest for. This is how long... Uh, how much break we get in we break it up into sets and we literally try to take that data now and then move forward okay how could we get forced to perform better next week so I'm I'm very much a data guy mm-hmm. and that's what we do with, with the Frenchies okay so we check in to see is this is this dog making a cut yes if, if it does okay cool this dog is good to breed if it's not making make a cut then no then you're taken away from the breed right but there, as you're saying when you mentioned the bigger nose there's a new 
type of Frenchie that they're pushing called the Big Rope. And it's horrible. It's horrible. Let me see if I could I could freaking Google this shit for you. Right? The big rope. But they're, they're way more expensive. Yeah, Google big rope Frenchie. Right? Yeah, look at look at the look at the muzzle now. It's like Yeah. So it's it's a way more skin, way more a lot more fat around the face. So now they're selectively breeding them to be like... Yeah, I don't want a dog that is fatter. Look I at just, that. I would, I would and just this, they, people are paying big money for this. You want a dog that can breathe. Correct, right? So for us, we, again, for us, we want our dogs to be able to go on a plane with you. Um, right? The big bro, yeah, big bro Frenchie. Oh yeah, it's horrible. But you see... It looks like a Neapolitan Mastiff in, in Frenchie size. A miniature. Size. A miniature Neapolitan. And... and yeah, the, the news don't live. All, very all those long. folds will, will trap bacteria. And Correct. All. Like for instance, everybody knows if you're a bulldog owner out there and you know you know have experience with them. You know, especially if you're living in a warmer climate, it's a little a little less when you're in the cold, but in a warmer climate, daily you better clean those those folds. Yeah. Daily you have to to, to Every spread day it you out. Go, to you have to walk with a box of wipes. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy because and they get infected so easy. So easy. You know, like I have a few customers that have English bulldogs. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's, that's that's a breed that's yeah, a them. rough one. That's a rough one too. You know, a real rough one. But but uh, you know, like again, you're seeing uh, some good breeders coming out there with with uh, some good quality dogs. You know, yes, you might have. I always tell people, yes, you might have to pay a little more in the beginning, but when you look at at how many years you're gonna get off the dog, you will save multiple fold dot in vet bills correct in vet bills and heartache you know for me like it's i bond with my dogs more than humans right like a human could die i might i may be like oh shit they died right but uh, if a dog died i'll be like oh like i'm heartbroken right i can't speak Tell me about and, it. yeah like for me I, I bond super strong with my animals and i know there's a lot of other people people out there who who bond like that and it's the worst thing that you your dog is dying three years old Four years old. And again, it, it might not necessarily be the diet because we have experience with clients who who fed their dog raw, right? Uh, the entire life of the dog, it has eaten like the best and you're dying at four years old, right? Meanwhile, big up the potongs on them out there. Meanwhile, the potongs on them living 17 years on on just trash, right? I had a, I had a female pit bull that was 16. Yeah. Well, so that's my favorite breed. Big up the pit bulls on it too. The pit bulls, I, I, that's my favorite breed. My favorite, favorite breed has to be the pit bull. They're just such capable dogs. And I, I find that they have such a bad name, you know, for, for such a good, capable dog. And if trained well, they are such an asset because they could do everything. They could hunt. They could do protection. They're good with, with kids. Right, they have a higher pain tolerance. When those kids grab them, they jump on them. Have a higher, way higher pain tolerance. Grab the ear, pull yeah. the tail. And I, and for the most part too, I like Rotties for that too. Um, for their that kind of gentle disposition that they could have once trained. Uh, because like for instance, and my once grand- familiar with you. Yes. Right. <laughs> for like for instance, my grandparents, like as I said, they always had Rotties, but uh. Just like a lot of us old people out there, we like training wasn't a thing. Like even only when I was an adult or when like maybe my teens, there wasn't like internet and stuff. It was now jumping out there. The first book that really taught me a lot was the Complete Dog Book. It was a it's a hard red cover book, and it had a lot of information in there about little training and diseases and, but but they never really believed in training a dog. It was like well the dog know what it knows. We, we don't create dogs we don't use leash but when when i was growing up as you say mm-hmm. the beginnings right there is um the curler method yeah koala method yeah then you had um, but that koala method was rough yeah, if anybody you did research i was koala born method. 1970 yeah. right and i started working yeah. with dogs a lot from, of, from age seven yeah. so heavy compulsion the, the, curler, the curler method then you had conrad most All right you know the short mm-hmm. and I still have that book. I mean, let me tell that, you, that I, is you, can you know take if you if you if you read that and and 
what you're supposed to be doing yeah according to this book and you apply that to today's times no yeah you'd be you'd be feel, in prison you'll feel, you'll, feel, you'll, you'll feel like a neanderthal yeah you'd be in prison right? i mean t- science has changed there is some little good there is some good takeaways from yeah. from and, you know and it keeps changing and and that is what what some of the the, the force free people don't get right yeah. so i grew up in the 70s so we had compulsion training right then with the tv series flipper right came the clicker training right because they did it with the dolphins yeah and call it positive reinforcement training and all that and i've always said so i don't know how positive it is to take an animal out of the wild stuff it in a tank starve it for a few days mm-hmm. and then reward certain behaviors with a hearing there's not much force free in that right yeah they call that <laughs> splitting hairs right they'll split hairs on things that they like and then they'll be like oh no you see that that's that's abusive that's abuse right you know so but having a killer wheel in a tank i know it, that, that you and know people pay in money to go people pay in money to yeah. go so you can't blame them you know right so that that is not exactly force free right yeah and and so i have luckily for me i would say i grew up with the first one right in compulsion yeah and, and how then, and l- then came about while you're on that the, topic the other how, end of it how was it for you and, and i have learned coming out of that com- like like when growing up in that in well, that com- heavy compulsion and then now you're seeing like the science changing well the thing is for me is coming out of the the compulsion era and then seeing the the clicker training and i have i was a teenager right at the right time mm-hmm. where i realized either one in isolation is not very good correct but if you take the best out of each mm-hmm. and throw it together yeah you have a pretty decent system yeah and i have worked with that system for a long time until then training methods changed again mm-hmm. where you use a lot of prey drive mm-hmm. for reward yeah. instead of food yeah right and, and how do you find as we on that How do you find uh wicking the dog in in prey uh versus food has has worked out for you? No, I know it, depend, it, it, it depends on the dog. It depends not just on the dog, it depends on the breed. Yeah. And it depends on the climate you're in. Right. So, if I if I want to produce speed, mm-hmm. I will use the toy. Mm-hmm. If I have to do a lot of repetition, I will use the food because mm-hmm. it slows down the dog. Mm-hmm. and i can do it multiple times without tiring out the dog. Yeah. So, we live in a hot climate. If i want to do something repetitively, if i use the toy, <laughs> there's either a fight with the game of tug, yeah, or i throw a ball or i throw the tug. Right. But it involves the dog going after it and i have yeah. to call back the dog yeah. and and so we spending <laughs> minutes yeah, just doing one rep. Yeah, breaking and only that breaking the flow. Right. So versus food <laughs> with food I can do 10 20 reps mm-hmm. in the space of less than 5 minutes. Yeah. So the dog is not running hot. The dog is not full. <coughs> right? Because I would make that food part of the meal. Yeah. Right? As you as you on that topic, I think that's another big point that that we give to our clients is not wasting that food time. Right? Like So so another easy way of getting in those reps is the same food you had to feed the dog anyway. Yeah. Today, that's just get, let's just say you you, you weren't working to, to to be competing in obedience. You just want some basic pet obedience. Mm-hmm. Use that three to five minutes of instead of feeding your dog any bowl, and it doesn't matter if you're feeding kibble, if you're feeding raw, whatever. <laughs> right. <coughs> But use that time. that 5 minutes oh gosh 5 minutes right and give the dog a couple a couple reps or some things or downs or sets or, you, you can know, even stay. do a, a, a whole healing pattern yeah i yeah. Get, I, I, yeah. i put out a video not too long ago mm-hmm. with with, well, uh, check this with man for, instagram please the man with forces aunt right right um his father's um sister right where i'm doing a healing pattern with the football in my hand yeah yeah so she is in the heel yeah and we're talking focused heel right mm-hmm. she's like yeah this. we used to do that too we used to do that and too i have the football here she makes eye, she doesn't look at the ball she look makes eye contact yeah. and i'm going down the driveway come yeah. back up work for back, your food 
And then she sits, and I wait yeah. a few seconds, and I look straight ahead, and she's still looking at me. Correct. And then, yes. And then put down the football. Correct. We as, I mean. Do that once on a morning. Yeah, and right? once an evening, and you're good to go. I'm Think doing, about I'm it. Doing so, uh, oftentimes, I'm doing the same with fours. Yeah. I mean, if you if you have to go and work and get money, right? Your dog shouldn't just be being rewarded that free meal for, for no work. Right? No, you have to do something. You have for to do something for me for this. And I think that's the biggest problem. You know, like there's there's we we over spoil our dogs. People yeah. are just spoiling their dogs. Oof. Right? Well I don't think anybody spoils their dog more than me. Yeah. Right? But it is conditional. Yeah. Yeah. You can have the world for me, but you have to do something first. Yeah. It's a transaction. So, yes. Yeah, so with Ninja, with my, my shepherd, right? My narcotics dog. Mm-hmm. He had very good focus. Right. And I selected him because of it. Mm-hmm. Out of the whole litter, I had a pick of the litter. Yeah. And in the middle of the chaos of all the puppies, right smack in the middle, there's this one dog just staring at me. Yeah. That is the one I selected. Yeah. And with him, with food time, I would put the bowl down on the ground, have him in a sit, and he has to look at me. Mm-hmm. Uninterrupted eye contact. And I started off with a second, two seconds. And during the course of six months to a year, yeah. I had him at a minute. Yeah. But that meant if he looks away and looks at the food at 55 seconds, yeah. I would start, start over. over. Yeah. So sometimes feeding him yeah. was not five minutes. Feeding him was 20 minutes, yeah. half an hour. I had a, my English but, bull terrier. I used to do that too. But what, he, what it did is that any time he wanted something, any time he wasn't sure about something, eye contact. Give me. The world can come crumble and check around me face. him. He makes eye contact. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Check that, in with me face. Yes. You know? Shit at the fan, check He's, in. He sleeps on a pillow in the bedroom and you just turn around in your bed at three o'clock in the morning and he will look up and stare at you. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, okay, we're going to work? Yeah. <laughs> right? You're going to work? No, go back to sleep. Yeah. Okay. That's good stuff. You know. That's good stuff, man. And first, that's the same now. Yeah. He escorts me to the washroom. Yeah. And then coming back, he's hoping that he gets to go on the bed. No, no, go on your pillow. Yeah. You know, and then he goes on his pillow and I fall asleep. And then when I'm sleeping, he sneaks up on the bed anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then he's, you see... Naughty you, boy. You see this this look of, shit, you caught me, yeah. right? So when I wake up and he's on the bed and I look at him, you know, when just the tip of the tail wags, yeah. not the whole yeah. tail? Yeah, that's the, that's the nervous. See, that's the, like, like, that's oh, the shit, you, I you caught up, me. didn't I? Yeah. You caught me. Yeah. And he just flows off the bed and puts himself on the pillow. Yeah, he melts. They melt. Don't, don't even have to say anything. You just look at him. Yeah, <laughs> just melt on the bed. And I love those things. Yeah. Could I be, you know, quote unquote, the trainer and, and buff him for it? And Yes, I could. Do I want to? No. Yeah. It is those little things that I just love about him. Yeah. That he tries. Yeah, yeah, he knows he's not supposed to, yeah, but he we, tries I mean, somehow. Yeah, each, each one of us, you know. Uh, every but when dog he gets caught, he also knows to do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. And that's why you know I'm a little lenient with that. Um, other things, of course, not. Right? Mm-hmm. There's there's certain things. If I say no, is no. Mm-hmm. Don't care what you think about it. And I mean, it. that's a good balance, right? No, it's it's just, I mean, no. it's like being a parent. Huh? It's, it's it, you are being a your dog parent. You know, right? your so dog I, parent. If, if I say no in German. A little louder. Yeah. He hits the brakes. Yeah. You know, because he knows it's not wise to go beyond that. Mm-hmm. And that that is what he learned. So if I take a dog like him, can you imagine force in the hands of a of a force free trainer? Nah. He would he would kill somebody. Definitely from what I've seen, he would kill somebody. That would be a total yeah. different kettle of fish. Yeah. He would li- I w- he would literally kill somebody, I think. Yeah, because you know? because he he's a he's a very he's already a confident dog and he's a fairly dominant yeah. dog. So too. if you if you just told me yes my whole life, yeah, I I I, I would see for he would not make it this far. I don't think he'd have make it this far. By like one year old, he's biting somebody for shit. Sure, he bites in somebody. Yeah, he bit me. Oh, you see, so just because of COVID, mm-hmm. we didn't get to socialize him the way we wanted to, and so we were up on the training field in the club. Mm-hmm. And he wanted to have a go at a shepherd. And, he, he and I corrected him for it. And his first reaction was to redirect. Yeah. How bad was it? Turn, no, it, 
I was lucky enough that I was wearing a training vest and it had a ball in your pocket. Yeah. So when he tried to bite the hip, his ball, ball he caught. Yeah. So the pressure went down on the ball yeah. instead of me. So I was okay. Yeah. But he, him and I had it out right after, seconds yeah. after. I mean, and I got like, and yeah. I got I got a side submission. Yeah. And since then we friends. Yeah. Yeah. You know, since then we friends. As, as uh, Carlos Ramirez says, the a lot of a lot of. Uh, a lot of situations that we get ourselves into with our dogs is a great learning experience, right? For both the dog and the handler, right? And again, it's, it's part of the relationship. Like no relationship is, is us holding hands in the beginning. No relationship, right? You're going to have sometimes when you, when you, you know, you have it out for, for the person, right? Could be a friend, could be a wife, could be a dog. It's a relationship, right? So it's not going to be perfect and you need to have boundaries, Yep. Right, but you also have to understand the animal that you're working with. Correct, right? correct. So we had our issues resolved, mm -hmm. and he trusts me, right? But he is a, a fairly dominant dog, and touch is a form of domination. Mm -hmm. He does not allow anybody outside of this household to touch him. Mm -hmm. But then I, that I'd could also be a, a socialization thing from, you know, that, I, that nice I period. I took him to, to vets. I took him to vet techs mm -hmm. on the table and all of that. They got a new employee that walked through the door and he was a, a, a little puppy. He was five months old. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Immediately. Serious. Immediately. Naughty boy for as, as that person came into Naughty. the room, didn't even try to touch him, just came in the room and said, yeah. oh, it's a, a new puppy and uh, start growling immediately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's not. I mean, you, you get dogs like that, huh? At the vet, <laughs> they, they listen to the heartbeat. Yeah. And I'm so where we want me to put it. Yeah. Because they can't put it there. Yeah. Yeah. I can I can park him next to the vet. And he will not interfere with her. But just don't touch, man. Just don't touch him. Don't touch, man. I can walk him through a crowd of 30 people. Doesn't care. He'll not interfere with anybody. Just don't touch him. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. When we finish with this podcast, I'm going to show you a picture of of us attempting to microchip him. Okay. It's interesting. Like see that. At the I end, like I did it by myself. Yeah. With no Just issue. Stuck with, him. With no well, issue. Well, I mean, I guess first taught you how to be a. You know. How to be a. No, nah, I, I I I learned how to do it before, but if you know the dog, you know how to deal with it, because. Force, that's why it's his name, right? Yeah. If you come at him with force, yeah, he'll meet you every step of the way. Yeah. He will escalate with you. And I find I find you get that a lot with the uh the male rotties. Yeah, they're pushy. The male rotties. But even even among male rotties, and I've had rotties before and yeah. I had male rotties before. He's pushy. He is by far the most pushy mm -hmm. that I owned. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I understand one of his sisters is just like it. Yeah. Yeah. Different she stayed with the breeder. Yeah. And he told me, yeah, she's like that too. Yeah. The others are more social. But those two, not so much. Yeah. That could be a genetic thing too. Could be right? could be a genetic thing. And I love him. Yeah. To be honest with you, I love him for that. Yeah. I love him for that. Yeah. Yeah. No, because you, you know, know you're can safe too. You know you can rely on him. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. You know right? you're safe too. I spent three he's three he's, <laughs> he's a little over three years old. I spent three years trying to find something that scares him and I've come up empty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that scares him. Mm -hmm. You can crack that whip right next to him and he will watch you straight in your face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he he's a he was a very stoic. I took him to a shooting sure. range. We are 25 mm. feet away from two people shooting AR-15s. Yeah. And he's lying on the ground chewing on a water bottle like they don't exist. Yeah. That's good Good news. Good solid news. Right? He doesn't care. Yeah. I have video of it. He just chews on the bottle. You hear the gunshots and he's like, yeah. Da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he doesn't doesn't bother him in the least. Mm -hmm. As it, it shouldn't, according to the breed standard. Mm-hmm. If you do a CTP with a Rottweiler, they have to pass uh, a single gunshot on leash and two gunshots while jogging mm -hmm. without looking in the I direction of the shot. Yeah, it's hard to find those. 
right? That is what he breeds thunder says, and that is yeah. that is what what you know. Yet. And where Aaron gets his is um, that is one one god yeah. where he gets his dogs from. Yeah, they do that. They do the CTPs and all mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And Aaron, where's Aaron based again? Pity Valley. Pity Valley. Okay. Right? Okay. And um, yeah. So when people you know see the price, oh, 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 oh. but I know what you're getting. Yeah. I know. I know that you know you get nerves of steel and and. High drive. Well, it's it's like way. It, it, it's I, your have way, a, I have I have an aunt, right? Elena. Elena is a mal in a Rottweiler body. Yeah, cracked up. If you can't walk in the yard without almost falling over the dog because he's constantly in front of you, yeah. trying to engage you into something. Yeah. I can't leave a toy out with her mm-hmm. because she drives herself. Mm. She takes a kong, flings sure, it, right? in, flings it in the I air. I have a dog like that. And then chases it. Yeah. Right, they and make, she and she does it, easy, and she does it at lunchtime, mm-hmm. and then she's panting frantically, lying down behind my gym equipment in the shade, yeah. and the moment she cools off a little bit, she picks up the kong and does it all over again. Yeah. She'll give herself a heat stroke. Yeah. You can't leave a toy with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> that, good dog. That toy come has to come with you as the handler. Yeah. I don't, you have to monitor her. Yeah, but you that's know? good. That's good drive because now you yeah. when you channel that, it'll be crazy. It'll be crazy good drive. It'll be you. You'll get a lot out of a dog like that, you know. Yeah, she's super. I mean, she, you know. And then the the little shepherd that I have, she's like that too. Mm-hmm. All of them in here. Two of them are in. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, but that is, again, if I picture my dogs, with anybody, <coughs> in the force free community, somebody is gonna get hurt. Yeah. Same with my dog. Somebody's going to get hurt. And I don't care how much they tell me, oh, we dealt with aggressive dog. No. You have not dealt with a truly aggressive yeah, dog. No. You have you're lying, dealt you're lying. with a fair aggressive dog. Lying. Right? Maybe. Yeah. A dog that had... Yeah. Um, a dog that... If that had, that yeah. had kennel, kennel aggression or, yeah. or, or barrier aggression. Yeah. Maybe. But right? It, but a strict, straight up, but full a straight on, dominant up, I'm dog. Gonna, I'm going to fuck you up kind of dog. Yeah. They have not dealt with. Yeah. Yeah. I've dealt with two Kangal puppies that almost killed me at age seven months. Yeah. No, right? they're, they're bad. They're ca- <laughs> ca- the Kangals and them, people that sleep on them, they're good dogs. But again, they're good for what they, what they were bred for. What Livestock bred for. protection. Yeah, they don't do well in an urban environment. No. Right? no. I, like the first one I ever trained was in, again, downtown Toronto. And it was really hard to train that dog. Yes. <laughs> it was really hard to train the dog because it came, it was like seven, eight months. That dog would eat, that, you know, it's feeding kibble. That dog would eat eight cups a day. A yeah. kibble. Eight cups. I would feed that dog in like a bowl and mix meat in. I was, I was living in Greece at the time and, and a, a diplomat living in Istanbul, which is a three hour drive, mm-hmm. wanted me to, to train his, his two puppies. Mm-hmm. He said, Yeah, he has two puppies. And he said, Well, what type of dog is it? And I have never heard about a, a yeah. Kangal before. So he, he told me that they're Kangal. So. When I drove across to Istanbul, before I met him, a friend of mine breeds dogs. So mm-hmm. I went to him and he said, let me introduce you to somebody. So he had me meet this this old guy and he translated for me, who originated from an area where they, where they breed them mm-hmm. between um, Turkey and Iraq. Right. And the advice he had for me is train them before they're six months. I said, what happens after six months? They will try to kill you. Yeah. And I'm, I was early 20s, right? Yeah. I felt invincible. I said, yeah, he's talking shit. Right? Yeah. So I reach Istanbul, I meet my clients, and I start, he's bringing out the first dog, and I try to teach this dog a sit. You know, the food by the nose, raise it up. Yeah. The dog wasn't going for it, so, so I'm trying to, to touch the, touch the butt, butt a little bit. And this dog walked up the leash. Yeah. Trying to get at me. Yeah. And they're, they're so long, so they reach high up. I never so a long I'm muzzle to her. Uh, I'm standing there, you know, yeah. keeping the dog at bay, and I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck yeah. is going on there? And they could and they could take the jam into her. Uh, yeah, and they take endless pressure. And they stubborn. They're they stubborn. They take dog. endless pressure. And it's like... Of of all the shepherds, they're the most stubborn. Like, you know? I, I got the job done. Yeah. With the two of them, right? But it took some doing. It took some doing, and yeah. it was an eye opener for me, 
So okay, you're not as invincible as you thought you was, and there's dogs out there that will surprise you. <laughs> yeah, boy. Right? I, I learned that the too. hard way. Yeah. Right? By almost losing limbs. Yeah. So when I hear people talk about, oh, I want a master, and they have no handling skills, but they want a master. Yeah. Oh, like yeah, you are like insane. a bar boil. I see a, a, that's a thing you, now in you Trinidad. You are insane. Bar right? boils. A lot of people into that in Trinidad yeah. now. And, and I trained a crazy. few of those, right? Yeah. And I met good ones and I met asshole ones. Yeah. And the asshole ones, you have to be on your toes. Yeah. And a client called me, he has a shepherd he wants me to train. Mm-hmm. I come to the house, it's a Caucasian he has. Oh, shit. I say, right, put that puppy back in the kennel. This training session is going to be an hour long lecture. Yeah. And I told them what they have. Yeah. And what's m- most likely going to happen. Yeah. So after that, the entire family was present in every training session. Mm-hmm. And I made everybody handle the dog. Yeah. Every session. The only time when somebody wasn't there is when they were out of the country. Yeah. And so it went well for them. Yeah. But they had to raise their fencing twice. Yeah. Because they had a school yeah, next door. Yeah, those dogs will kill. They had a school next door. So they had, to raise, the, they had to raise the wall. Yeah. They had to change their gate. They spent endless money just fortifying the premises. Yeah. To keep this thing in. Because mm-hmm. he was brutal. You know, <laughs> that dog was very loving with the family. Right. Even with me. But anything outside, anything that doesn't live there was was the enemy number one. Yeah. Very aggressive too. Mm-hmm. You know? So those dogs, I can't see any of those guys, you know, that only talk about training. And then my favorite, it is science says. Science says. Yeah. And science has proven. I find, I find this, he gets a lot of science says from the people who... um only have one like one dog right two dogs yeah right? you're so now getting into the dogs and you're seeing science says yeah you know right? or, and this or, come from a man that that knew i knew in the game right and i mean you know so you had you had five maybe five dogs and you may have trained 50 or 100 mm-hmm. they are those of us that had thousands of dogs passing through them. Yeah. Over a lifetime. Yeah. In my case, it's it's four decades. There are dogs that you will not be able to handle. Mm-hmm. And they believe they can handle anything just because of science, right? And when you look at the science, most of it was anecdotal surveys mm-hmm. that are touted as science. And the few st- actual studies that are mentioned there are studies that started with a bias. Mm-hmm. Skewed. Yes, of yeah. course. And some of them, they actually omitted in the follow-up. So when they, when, when they took dogs that had a problem, yeah. and then they trained it with their method, mm-hmm. and then three months later, follow-up, mm-hmm. how is the dog now? Yeah. Out of the, I think it was six dogs, that they did six of them fail out of the six dogs seven fail three returned to baseline right meaning they did the same thing that they yeah, did before just back to the moment training totally. the moment training stopped mm-hmm. they went right back mm-hmm. um three they omitted right. from the follow-up because, because they must they, have been they worse because <laughs> they got worse yeah right <laughs> so that is the kind of science they're talking about and then yeah. if you if you look at you know learning and and the four quadrants, choosing only one cannot work. Correct. And I science agree. says, but only what you pick and choose, it says. Yeah. Because science also said that corrections work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? you can't, can't be too much on one side too. Is that they are never necessary. Yeah. Okay, let me hand your forces leash and you show me how it's never necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Just walk him. Just walk him around the block. Yeah. Right? Just see him, and when see you, him when next to the dog. The road dog comes out of the gate because give him gate, some food, right? Then I, I give you food. I give yeah. you give him some a food, pouch give full him some of bacon, food and a leash, right? On a flat collar, yeah. And yeah, because you can't use a front collar, and you it's can't true. use a slip lead, right? <laughs> you and you show me, tools. and you show me your method. It's true. 
That's so Nobody true. will pick up that challenge. No. Because they know they're either yeah. going to get mauled. They'll only choose. They the get mauled. They get pulled down. Yeah. They get embarrassed. I think that's the next thing. The four three people, they usually choose. They pick and choose their, their cases, right? So like, oh, I could of fix. Course. I'll try. I could fix this as a uh, sausage. Mm, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. You know? So, skewed. Of course. Skewed. And you have, you have, they never show their work. Yeah. That's the you other never thing. see a video with them actually working. Yes. You only see videos with them talking about work. Guys, beware of beware of trainers and breeders that post only pictures. That's a problem. Pictures yeah. alone, then you you can't see the pudding, and you need to see what's inside that. Yeah, you know, um, uh, and that's a big red flag. And it's a huge marketing machine that they, that they, you know put up. Yeah, and of course. Because you can't use any of the the normal training tools, mm -hmm. then we can. But but we we can sell you the no pull harness and we can sell you the halty. Yeah, which which kind of for some dogs it could be actually more detrimental for their yes for their I have, physical listen, health. I can show you for let out force, and I pick up the the prong collar. He will attempt to stick his head through it. Yeah. I have to open it up to put it on. But as far as he's concerned, that takes too long. Yeah. He wants to stick his head because he knows that he's going training. Yeah. Right? He's going to work. And he gets excited. Exactly. It's the same if I put the e-collar on it. Yeah. It's like right? it's like slat mill. Some people will say, see, it's like that's abuse. So then you're trying to tell me that that if you more than like that person isn't going on a treadmill. That the same person who has a problem with a slat mill is not going to the gym for shit show. You're sitting, you're sitting on your couch and you're speaking yeah, from your Yeah, the dog controls his speed. Right? On a the dog mode. controls his speed. Plus, you have brakes. Yes. So for me, sometimes, if I find my dog is driving too hard, I might slow them down. Say, oh, you know what? Because we might be on set five. I'm checking the time. I'm checking I'm checking how, how hard you're pushing it. And then, and then you get a dog like Force's brother, Frank, mm -hmm. who overrides the brakes. Yeah. Just over pushing the brakes. You can pull the brakes all the way. Yeah. And you're he's, still, mo he's it. still moving it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, high drive. Yeah, you'll meet him. Yeah, it, it, I think he's coming today. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so you going down there too? No, I'm coming with force. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I think I think this was uh... right. But um, yeah, he's he's um, he's a strong dog. Yeah, he's a very strong dog, <clears throat> very powerful, and he's bigger than force. Yeah, he's okay, wider, I'll taller. See, I'll take a look yeah. today. Uh, he's, he's excited a, he, to see. He's I'm really excited. I have to say, I've, 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 this this trip with Rottweilers has... He's a little machine. Yeah. and But it's more social than force. Yeah. More social. Yeah. Yeah. Has that you know? switch. Yeah. 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 Some yeah. dogs have he's, it, you know. He's a, Most dogs have it, you know, but for some dogs, like in, in Force's case, he gets emotional sometimes. Yeah. You know? He's he's like... Um, he he'll, he'll start to get angry. Play the game I want to. I want to play. Oh, oh that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah he like yeah. he wants to. Yeah. He, even when you when you reward him with the tug. Yeah. If you throw the tug, he'll pick it up and run around with it and shake it. Yeah. And then, that's it. Mm -hmm. But give him a game of tug. And you see it stepping up five notches. Yeah. He, he loves yeah. the fight. Yeah, yeah. He like and and usually he, you'll find the dogs that love the fight like that. Are the dogs that if you put too much pressure on them when we're doing like protection, mm -hmm. for instance, and you put too much pressure and they find it was unfair, they'll redirect. No. Usually the dogs that like, the, like you could tell, N make that correlation from now on. The dogs that like to fight in the tug, when, you, when you're trying to make a correction or, or they, they thought at that moment, hey, you were being unfair, they're redirecting. Right? Because they have no problem with the fight. Yeah. Right? They yeah, then they're comfortable in, in yeah. doing that. They're comfortable with it. Yeah, you know. So sometimes there was one one time I played midi tug with yeah. him, and did the tug of war, and he shook his head so hard that the the he stopped the knuckle. from the handle. No, it peeled off the skin. Yeah, I got that shit on already. my finger. I got that shit already. I Just shifted it. Yeah. Just shifted it. Yeah, it um, was still there. It is not in the right place. Rough, right? rough. But I want to I want to encourage you. I, she sent me this, right? Nicola Ferguson. Right. She is a trainer in the UK. Right. Um, she works. She trains service dogs. Yeah. And she um, 
competes in IGP with her Rottweiler. Okay. okay. She has two Rottweiler females yeah. that, that she's training in IGP. And she was studying to become a vet. Mm -hmm. And the prohibitive cost of the of the studies yeah. because of COVID yeah. brought that to, to an end. But she's writing about the force free dilemma, which is the title of her book, mm -hmm. which I can highly recommend. Yeah. Because she picks apart almost all the arguments mm -hmm. in a very common sense way. Yeah. And very clinical. Right. You know? And with a touch of humor. Yeah. She's she's very witty when yeah, in, in yeah, her yeah, writing. Yeah. I haven't finished the book yet. Yeah. But I'm I'm impressed, I must say. Okay. I'm impressed. Okay. So I like it. I really like it. So guys, check it out. Force the Force Free Dilemma by Nicola. Is Ferguson. it available on Amazon? Yes. Okay, guys, you heard that. It's available on Amazon. I want to give her a plug there. Yeah, make Sean <laughs> plug her. <laughs> and any any other <laughs> plugs you have to put in boy? Any other plugs? <laughs> well I know we have training for eight o'clock. Right, and we are trainees, so let me not let me, let me not be too late. But yeah, we'll we thanks for having me, guys. Right, okay. I appreciate it. Before you go, there's one one quick subject. I'm here. I'm here. Bring it out. Bring out our subject. That one. Very very force free. Right. I hate the way they're medicating dogs. Oh my gosh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew. Well, I knew it gonna it gonna hit. Um. Right. I'm from I'm from Canada. Right? And that is... The people are big on insurance there. Like pet insurance mm -hmm. and stuff. And that is a big deal. You know, like I've trained dogs that have been heavily medicated. Um, it's just like like ADHD for humans. Like, so you'll have a... And again, that's people who, who might get, for instance, a high drive dog. Right? And they would have... More than like the vet would have said, new to the dog is going to... It's going to make that yeah. dog... All of a sudden, your dog will not sit and, and down and all that shit once yeah. you neuter the dog. As soon as his balls is gone, calm. he's just going to be amazing and be able to do IGP and shit, right? And I'm, I'm seeing, yeah, it does, it's a big thing now where, you know, people are like, yeah, yeah my dog is, is, you know, they're medicated. And they're paying their money. They're paying their money. That's the thing, huh? People are paying their friggin' money for this. Right, but again, again, I think it's coming from a place of ignorance, um, and it's just about because I've dealt with clients like that, right? And you would be surprised, like they really did to the bottom of their heart, think that they were doing the best for their dog. Yeah, you know? I don't, I don't, I don't blame them. I blame the trainers that push them in that I, direction. I, that's what I'm gonna say now. Right, that that is my the issue. trainers. And and again, we've I've seen I've also and I told you about that I think last time we spoke about there's dog psychologists that you leave you sit in the waiting room and the psychologist is gonna go in the back and have a conversation with your dog for about an hour. And you know, that is that is when it comes out, they're gonna tell you all about the dog's problems. Right? And it's the it, it is the the trainers and the people who are pushing this this crazy nonsense. That is is given. I think all of us are bad name. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I, all of us. I believe that it's a bit of a those trainers trying to save face. They couldn't deal with the issue that the dog came with. Yeah, with so their no. methods that they're propagating, and so because the dog is beyond their methods, something yeah. is wrong with the dog. And then, as and we're on so that subject, take like, him to the vet to get medicated. So that's what I was not gonna say too. We yeah. have to also blame the force free vets because they're the ones who are actually when you go to the vet now <clears throat> off the bat when you go to the vet now in Canada by the time your dog gets the rabies shot which is usually around four five months old mm -hmm. you know we should neuter this dog next month because he's gonna get cancer and die right yeah he's gonna die next next three months if you don't neuter him now Right? <laughs> and it's no, there's a real thing. And now they're fair mongering people to neuter their dog. Like, oh my gosh, I, uh, um, are you, you, do you think that, that uh, my dog's, I, we get that question all the time. You think my dog is going to get cancer? The vet is telling me this. And so you have to blame those vets too. You have to blame the vets too. <clears throat> you know, because how else do people get medication? Dog trainers aren't, aren't 
uh, able to write prescriptions. So who's writing it? Who's yeah. writing it? But then again, as we're on that topic, that's another big, 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 big deal right now in Canada because there's a movement, right, where people are just... Most people are very disenchanted, and I think even in Trinidad, disenchanted with the vets, because you you're getting people like a lot of the vets. They're just they're on the money grab. So I'm gonna neuter this. I'm gonna fair monger you because I know you're gonna come and neuter your dog, right? <clears throat> I know if I and we've had we've 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 spoken to people and they don't talk about this, right? All the vets that 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 know about this check in. And friggin' tell us in the comments or do you have a comment section? Eh? No? Comment on the friggin' Instagram. Or the comments on the Instagram. But on check Instagram. in and let us know if if you, you could do it in an anonymous way. But tell us if you if that has been an experience because I know I've spoken to people where let's just say your dog has a problem. The vet is gonna say, you know what? You know what, Mark? It, it's not looking too good. I think we need to keep your dog today. They're gonna keep your dog fair among you. And you and you're emotional, huh? You're emotional. They're going to fear monger you. They're going to keep your dog today. You might say, okay, two days, right? Keep your dog. They, sometimes the dog might die on premises, right? They might call you and say, hey, Mark, I think we need to keep that dog two, two more days. Your dog is dead. Your dog is dead, right? But they're just milking you out, right? Racking up that bill. And they know you're going to friggin' pay it, huh? They know you're going to pay it, Right? And that's a big deal. All the vets, come on, man, do better, do better. Yeah, I mean, I haven't. That is something that I haven't heard about here yet. You're getting. Trust me, right? you, people don't trust vets as much anymore. Now, I will say this. I know they're only neutering thing here because one, of course, it gets you in the clinic, and two, we have a huge stray dog problem. Correct, but right? the reason but, for that is because we have a, a huge ownership problem. Yes. That's and why a, we. How much more do you breeder have? Problem. Pardon? And a huge backyard breeder problem. Yes. Because no dog that comes from my Rottweiler breeder's kennel right. will end up in the shelter. Yeah. Yeah, you vetted, of, you vetted those owners Alan's before. Dog, none, of, none of Alan's dogs will end up in Correct. the shelter. Correct. None of my dogs either. Right? None, none of, of my Roger's dogs, dogs. None of the Reem's dogs. The, all those good working dog breeders, their dog's not going to end up in the shelter. Mm hmm. Yeah, because they're vetting their clients. Because people seeking out these dogs yes. for a specific purpose. Yes. And you know you're not going to sell the dog to, to just any and everybody. Right? There's that. Right? And so, the, the, the fact that anything has to get neutered that walks through the door without taking in consideration that there may be a problem with calcium absorption if it's done too early. Yes. Um, over a lifetime, which then leads to hip dysplasia yeah. and, and ACL um, problems. Obesity is a, a in, big thing. Later on in age, right? Right. Obesity is a huge deal in yes. North America, right? Heart disease, all this Thyroid kind of problems. Thyroid, right? You get a yeah. lot of diabetes. You, you see a lot of diabetes in dogs now. Yeah. And, and a lot of times it's, it's said, well, you prevent testicular cancer. Yeah. But you're causing the dog, the dog is three times more likely to get blood cancer. Correct. That's, no, that's why I believe there's a yeah, time. No. There's a time for that. Usually are only six-year period, seven-year period if that dog is not a breeding dog, is not being able to use their reproductive system mm. a lot. Around six, seven years, I, I would definitely... Because sometimes if it's too late and the dog does get cancer, at that moment, they don't want to operate that late because mm. the dog is so old. But usually around that six, seven-year period... You know your dog is, you know your dog, if, even if it was a breeding dog, you know you're going to retire it soon. You know, if, if you, I believe if, you, if you're new to at that age, it, it might be the best bet for a male, you know? Right. Um, like, especially in my experience of, of dealing with clients, all that stuff, that is the best age. Anytime before that is too early. And sometimes you could push it a little later, but usually anytime after seven years old is, is a little bit late, you know? I mean, it's the, another thing I was talking to somebody about is you don't really see dogs living past 10 to 12 years anymore. You just don't see it, you know? Like, call around anybody you know who's dog, man, and ask, like, what's the average you see in dogs living now? You know, they're not living that. I'm not, it could also be what we feed in. Yeah, that has a big role to play. Yeah. Right? It could also be what we feed in the dogs, you know? But, uh, yeah, for the most part, 
like and and I could say it's, it's also because I've written like for instance the American Rottweiler, the American Doberman. It is predominantly like I don't think you could you could find any working temperament in those now. If 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 anything, it's to the other extreme where the dog is skittish and yeah. it's which makes nervy. them more dangerous. Yeah, because now yeah, freaking skittish. Because you have that amount of power and you have weak nerves. Yeah, you're right? biting. You never know when you're gonna get it. Correct. Because you never know when the dog gets spooked sufficiently to get defensive. Correct. You know, I rather have a strong nerve dog that doesn't care. Yeah, yeah, a confident dog. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I you agree. Know? You know. So. All right. Well, you guys, we are going to. I'm going to take some bites from uh from Mark's dog now. <laughs> 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 uh, no big deal. Right, uh, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go and get back to work, right? Uh, Mark, thank you guys for having me here. Thanks for coming right. in. Yeah, I appreciate it. Next time I come us. down, I'll I'll definitely hit you guys up, um, and we'll definitely be be keeping in contact with with you guys uh, at Dog Point, you know. So big up the guys at Dog Point. Big up, big up you guys for having me and that kind of stuff, right? Right. Thanks for coming, Jamie. Yeah, it was a pleasure having you, and. Um, we keep, didn't talk keep, as much shit as, as I thought that we would have talked. You know, but next time, next well, time. Well, there's always, next there's time always I'll, more. I'll have Even if you're in Canada, we can do this yeah. remotely too. You know? Correct, correct. We so can, next time, guys, I'll again. have the shit talk on, on a million for you. Right? We will get no work done. <laughs> <laughs> Zero work. Right? All right, guys. So have All a right. good one. All right.